Okay, so let's lead off with uh, the Observer notes from uh, Full Gear. You wrote uh, your your lead story on the show, on the business notes, on some of the booking. Um, I guess the thing I wanted to start with was Swerve and Hangman. Mm -hmm. And I thought your story was very fair. It brought up the pros and cons of doing the match that they did. But the thing that still hangs with me is I thought, Coming out of that match, or at least even when I was watching, I thought Swerve was the baby face in that match. That's so funny because, like, I thought that, like, it was not designed to be a double turn match. And Paige did not really react like a heel to me, really. But Swerve absolutely was booked to be a baby face. But, you know, by traditional means, whether and he was cheered on the, you know, he was cheered a lot on the show, uh, you know, Wednesday night as well. But, yeah, the one spot where he like walked through the staples, it was just like, man, I hope that they're turning him baby face, because if they're not, they just did, you know. Um, and plus, plus, he won at the end, you know, over the guy who's defending his family, which I always think is kind of a bad idea. Well, it wasn't only that hangman in his two promos he said he was going to piss on swerve's grave so he yeah. said he was actually going to kill him yeah, he and did. then in the second promo he said he was going to be the judge the jury and the executioner yeah. so after that after that those promos i was talking to john the rock and i'm like well hangman's gotta win or he's like a giant liar and he didn't I, I i i i you know like you can argue wins and losses and they don't mean much they should but they don't i mean that's the reality but um i did feel going in that he needed to win the match you know um and the only way i would say that he he couldn't is if your decision is just that swerve is your new, you know, I don't say one, a baby face, but at least one B baby face. Cause if it's, if it's a two, if he's your, he's your number two baby face page, might as well have won because of the nature of what they did. But um, yeah, no, I felt he needed to win unless the decision is, is that swerve is your guy. I mean, like you're a real guy, not just a guy, your guy. And if he is, then yeah, go, go with swerve. You know, I mean the spot, um, I mean, it absolutely felt, you know, like I wrote, I mean, it, when, when one of the most brilliant things that Eddie Graham was always credited with was this was Dusty Rhodes was going to turn, you know, he was starting the turn, but he hadn't even started. He hadn't even hinted it or anything in Florida. This is in 74. And he had a world title match with Jack Briscoe. And um, like it, they were they went like, you know, I think they were 47, 48 minutes in. I mean, it was a long freaking match. And just the fact that Dusty went with Jack Briscoe, who, you know, in Florida was like the, you know, everybody knew he was the greatest of the great and he, you know, they'd seen him grow up and world champion and everything like that. So Dusty just hanging with Briscoe for that long is, is already, you know, a positive for Dusty. But then, you know, um, like at the 47, 48 minute mark, Dusty does his finisher, the elbow, the dr elbow drop, and Jack gets his foot on the ropes and for the rest of the match, people started, there was cheers for Dusty. They were still cheering Jack more because it's Jack Briscoe in Florida, but Dusty started getting cheered. And at the time I thought, wow, these fans are like, there's fans that are not cheering Jack Briscoe in Florida. And then, you know, whatever it was, I'd have to look up the dates. I know when I wrote, um, I know when I wrote the Dusty uh, obit, you know, it was in there and I, my gut is, you know, it was a couple of weeks later when they actually did the turn. But by that point, because of that match, and I think the match like went, you know, a couple more minutes and was a DQ finish or something. They didn't beat Dusty. Um, but it was like, you know, that spot always stuck with me because it was like Watts, you know, who was, um, I think Watts was was actually, uh, if I, yeah, Watts probably was booking at the time, but it was Eddie's decision, you know. And Watts would always tell me about how, yeah, that was the spot. The foot on the ropes with Jack Briscoe was so brilliant because everybody started to like dusty, but you didn't, you know, they didn't really boo Jack and the, the, they'd never wanted to turn Jack heel. That was never the idea, but they were ready to go with dusty. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, they did the full on turn with pack song and Gary Hart. So, um, 
yeah, I'm watching the match and that staple spot, you know, where he's laughing it off. I'm going like, that's the dusty spot, you know, to turn swerve. I don't know if they're going to turn him, you know, and, and, but they sure as hell should. I mean, after he won that match and, and he did those spots, you know, and it was a great match, you know, I mean, for what it was, I know people who, you know, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, um, a match like that. And, you know, there's, um, you know, there's, there's bad faith and good faith criticism of that match, but overall, you know, it was a match of the year candidate. I mean, I just thought the match was incredible, but you know, the, you know, the, the drinking of the blood thing, man, I would not have done that. I mean, it, it, there's a good chance it'll mean nothing. I'm not talking about turning off fans. It'll turn off some fans. I know it did because, you know, I got plenty of feedback that it did from people who are, who are not bad faith looking for something, you know, or to, to, to criticize AEW, but our legitimate AEW fans, um, and to me, like, it's like, that's, uh, you know, I've seen more dangerous and more things, more gross in wrestling and all this, but it's like, man, it's the contract year. And they had like, they had TV execs there, you know? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is like, it only takes one to get mad at something like that and go, we don't want this shit on our air. And you don't want that this year or you don't want it any, ever, but you really don't want that right now. So I just thought that like that spot, um, even though it got a giant, giant pop and under normal circumstances, if you were in year one of your contract, I would say, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it's like whatever. But because of the nature of where we're at right now, it's like I wouldn't have done that because I just thought that that was it's an unnecessary it's an unnecessary risk. That's all I would say. Um, and if if they didn't have the enemies that they did, maybe I would even like not even worry about it. But the reality is, is we can't pretend they don't because we know they do. And it's already happened to them. You know, it already happened to them with that the, the Nick Gage Chris Jericho match. You know, um, and right now they probably have more enemies now than they did then. And, you know, we just had the thing with uh, Jim Mitchell and the NWA thing. So it's like, it's just not worth to me. It's, it's, it's not worth the risk as far as those two guys, man, they, they, Adam Page is just, he's fantastic. You know, when it comes to a big match, like people will talk about Danielson, they'll talk about Kenny Omega and Osprey and all that. And, um, you know, those type of guys, Zach, you know, the Shingo Takagi, you know, Okada, whatever, you know, um, but, but Adam Page is like, he doesn't get the credit. I think he deserves, um, for just how hard he works and how good he is when it comes to doing a big match, you know? So, um, you know, and he did it again. Yeah. I, I wish that his standing as far as the main event scene would be a little bit more consistent because I do think that him being sort of on and off TV has yeah. really hurt him over the last year and a half or whatever that is. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like, I agree completely. And when he did the, the, the second promo, you know, the first promo was, was really good. The second promo probably better, you know, um, for the swerve match and the crowd reaction and everything like that, you know, it was like, they finally got him back and then he lost, you know, which is again, him losing is not the end of the world, but like when you, when you're fighting, to, when you're a baby face fighting to defend your family and you lose, it's not a, it's, it's like, it, it's something I would do, you know, unless, you know, there's something bigger. And if Swerve is, if they've just decided that Swerve is their guy and we're going to go all the way with him, then that's bigger. And then, you know, it's not like it's going to kill Adam. He can come back from that. But it, it, it hurts, you know, it hurts. But and sometimes, but that's, and, and if it does, like, like, again, at times you have to sacrifice top guys to make new top guys. I mean, it's just how it is. And if this is that, then that's fine too. As is always said, it's, you know, we'll see what the follow-up, because the follow-up. Yeah, yeah, important. the follow-up is 100%. Because if, if Swerve is just a guy um, now, then, then you know, whatever. Um, but he's in this tournament, and, um, you know, I... I mean, I, I presume he'll at least make the final four. I don't know if he'll win it. Um, there's a part of me that, like, I, I, I wouldn't think him winning it is, is, is a bad choice at all. But the nature of how, this is the one thing of, of the, which I wrote and everything is, the nature of how they do the championships, which is that if you hold a title, you don't challenge for another title in most cases. You're just kind of off on your own little island. Like Jade had that TBS title forever, right? And never once got a shot at the big title, 
even though she was undefeated and had that title forever. That's just how they do it. And I don't understand that. I think it makes no sense, but that's Tony's framework. And that's, you know, he's taught everyone. And like, you know, I mean, even like when I was talking about the, um, the tournament and I go, you know, why isn't Omega in the tournament? So he's going for the tag title. So it's like everyone, <laughs> everyone has, has, has been taught by AEW that yes. if he's going for the tag title, why would he go for another title? I received the exact same excuses when I was having these conversations as well. And it like to me, now we'll talk about the, the continental classic in a second, but to me, when Omega and Jericho and some of these other guys, they don't want into this tournament. Then I kind of wonder about how valuable or how big this tournament is. But they uh, because there was no ex there was no explanation as to why or or how people were in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that um, you know, the tournament and I mean championship should be something that everyone wants. Because if you don't want them, well, who cares? If, well, here, if here, here's the question. In AEW, uh, in AEW parlance or, or or whatever, what what do you think would be more valuable, winning this triple crown or getting a number one contender spot? Uh, number one contender spot, you headline a pay per view, right? And I think headlining a pay per view is probably better because they don't headline a lot of different people. They they've given more people chances this year, but it's more elusive. Everyone's got a title. Very few people headline pay per views. So I would I mean, say that, it, and Samoa Joe's not in it. Why? Because he would rather have the title shot. Okay, but I mean, I actually do understand. Even though I wrote Samoa Joe, I would understand, and I'll tell you why. Because the finals are on this certain show, so therefore, you know, it's kind of awkward for him and Max to be in it because you got the finals on a show with a world title match. With G One, you don't have that issue because the fi the G One finals, there's no. A world title match on it so everyone's in but like this like a lot of people when this thing's announced and it's kind of like it's taken from g1 you know obviously it's the success of g1 which is where they're coming from but it's not g1 because g1 yeah kenny omega would be in g1 and jericho would be in g1 and takesha would be in g1 and samoa joe and max would be in g1 too you know because everyone's all the top guys are in g1 you know so um it's not that but you know at the same time it is, you know, like, look, we're going to get a whole lot of good matches. That's what's going to happen. We're going to get uh, several weeks of TV with, like, most nights, you know, Monday, most Wednesdays and most Saturdays, we're going to have three real good singles matches because every matchup in this, you know, he didn't put any slouches in this tournament on the good side. You know, he put, you know, even like with Danny Garcia, um, who, you know, again, um, you know, his win loss record doesn't really make sense to put him in the tournament. The fact is he's a hell of a wrestler. He needs to upset a big player though. Well, I mean, hopefully we got some upsets in this tournament. I mean, we didn't first night, but you know, and, and, and but yeah, I don't think, um, I don't think anyone should go undefeated. And I think that like, yeah, Danny Garcia should get a, you know, I mean, at least one win. I don't know if he's going to get two, but at least one win over somebody that you think he wouldn't, you know, whether it's, you know, I mean, it could be Danielson, but maybe, you know, over someone, you know, I mean, there's, there's uh, yeah, I, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have him go 0 and 5 and um, you know, but I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have anyone go 0 and 5 and I wouldn't have anyone go 5 and 0. Although, I mean, I guess you could make an argument of, of you, you could go lossless and have a draw or two. I, I guess you could do that. And the other one too is, and you may, you, you know, you may do that to protect someone. Maybe someone gets two draws and, but the guy has, who has more wins, but has a loss beats them out because of the way the point totals are, which I wouldn't be surprised if he does that. Like there's like maybe a way to, you know, like some, I mean, there is a way to do it because the wins are, are more weighted important. more heavily than in the G one. We watched Saturday night's main event season, again, season six. Episode five, October thirteenth, nineteen ninety, for the second time. I watched it the second time, and it was like it was like watching it the first time. I believe he said the Ultimate Warrior and the Legion of Doom are like oil and water. <laughs> Why? The Ultimate Warrior and the Legion of Doom are like oil and water. Mm -hmm. What is this guy talking about? Piper said he could tell it was Dusty's kid by his hair. He was blonde. Yes, I could spot him by his blonde hair. 
Back at Oktoberfest, they are playing Granny's favorite song, Roll Out the Barrel. That they were, in fact, playing Roll Out the Barrel. Dustin Rhodes refused their money, tore up, in fact, which I believe is a felony. He tears up a $100 bill, which I believe is a federal crime. My son! My son! And Dusty's like, my son! He's wailing, my son! They'll be playing Flugelhorn and Glockenspiel in an oom-pa-pa band. He'll be playing Flugelhorn and Glockenspiel in an oom-pa-pa band. But in the end, Hogan asks, what you gonna do when we Bavarian cream you? Excuse me? Bavarian cream you! Ew. I said, excuse me? And he clasps his hands together, and he raises them high over his head! And he raises his hands high in the sky, and he just falls! <laughs> and he drops to his knees with a mighty axe handle to the chest. Assisted by the genius, who he claims is in the Sausage Stuffers Hall of Fame. The genius, who we are told is a member of the Sausage Stuffers Hall of Fame. Carrie might have been dealing with something. You know, the Texas tornado had his issues at this time. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that he might have been impaired. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.